Now this video is an extension to the series of electrolysis videos. Um, in electrolysis, we learn that when we pass a current into an electrolyte, some ions are discharged at the anode, some ions are discharged at the cathode. And then the next thing that we need to do is to write half equations to represent the reactions of the ions. So in this video, we're going to focus on how to write the equations uh, for the discharge of the ions at each electrode. Before we look at the uh, equations, just want to remind you that a half equation only shows the reaction happening at each electrode, meaning um, the oxidation reaction that's happening at the anode and the reduction reaction that's happening at the cathode. Okay, bear in mind when we learn redox is that um, oxidation and reduction always occurs together. So there's no reaction where something is oxidized but nothing is reduced. So therefore when we write a half equation where we show only oxidation and re reduction. So for example in this case the first one represents reduction, the second one represents oxidation. This is not a full equation. It only shows half the reaction. Okay, so when we combine it, these two half equations, then we get the overall equation which tells us what actually is going on. So for example, in this case, your water is being reduced to H plus and your water is being oxidized to O2. Alright, so how do we know how to write the half equations is this, there are certain points if you keep in mind, it will help you to write the half equations more easily. Right? First thing we'll look at the cathode and cathode attracts cations. Okay, so we'll look at some common cations that we will get in the different electrolysis scenarios. Okay, so the first one is hydrogen ion. In order to know how to write the half equation, you have to know what each ion is reduced to. Okay, so for example, hydrogen ion is being reduced to hydrogen gas. Copper ions, copper 2 ions is reduced to copper metal. Okay, sodium plus ion. Okay, in this case, um, this cannot be aqueous, this must be molten because uh, aqueous sodium ions will never be discharged, right? It gives you sodium metal and then when silver ions are discharged, it gives you silver metal. Okay, the next thing is this. Um, before we go on to balance the charges, we need to balance the number of atoms first. So in this case, for example, the first um, equation, you need to add a 2 in front of hydrogen so that hydrogen atoms are balanced. That once we have balanced all the atoms, we now need to balance the charges. Okay, that means we need to add electrons somewhere. Now this is the part where students tend to find confusing. Do I add electrons to the uh, left of the equation or do I add electrons to the right of the equation? Okay, there are two ways to, to, um, to address that question. One is to recognize that reduction occurs at the cathode. So what is the definition of reduction? Reduction is the gaining of electrons. right? So where do we add the electrons? We add them to the reactants because they gain electrons and become reduced. Okay. Another easier way to remember is this. If you look at the um, ions at the cathode, they are all positively charged. right? Positively charged ions will attract electrons. So we add them to the positive charge side. Okay, and how many electrons to add? We must add enough electrons such that the charges are cancelled out. Okay? So for the other electrode, for your N node, um, now it will attract your N ions. Okay? And then uh, oxidation occurs at the N node. So we need to know what each N ion is oxidized to. For that, um, hydroxide is oxidized to oxygen gas. Okay, chloride is oxidized to chlorine gas. Oxide ion is also oxidized to oxygen. Okay, the last one I'll leave it 
uh, for now we'll explain it um, later it's a bit different from the rest okay so to balance the first three equations we need to first to balance the atoms of each element for the very first one when we look at hydroxide um, it's oxidized to oxygen but now your hydrogen um, is nowhere to be found so definitely um, we need to have water in the product as well okay so this equation is not easy to balance so I would encourage you to memorize um, the half equation for this particular one where we have four hydroxide giving you one oxygen two water plus four electrons okay now notice again now that the reactants your anions are negatively charged so it doesn't make sense all right to add electrons here okay because negative negative will repel all right so electrons will never appear on the same side as anions okay so for equation number two we need to balance the charge oh sorry we need to balance the chlorine first and then we need to balance the charge and for the uh, third equation we need to balance the charge by adding two electrons so once again since the reactants are all negatively charged um, they do not want any more electrons so they can only give away electrons all right for the last uh, example we have copper metal which is a reactive electrode whenever a reactive electrode is used at the anode we must take care that it can be oxidized and what is it oxidized to It's oxidized to your metal ion okay and again to balance the charge we need to add the two electrons okay so the important note to keep in mind is this if your reactants are positively charged uh, they tend to be reduced so we add electrons to the reactants if your ions are negatively charged um, we cannot add any more negative to it so it, the electrons must appear on the other side of the equation with that in mind I hope that will help you all in writing your half equations now the half equations that we can encounter in the syllabus is very limited all right so in fact it's quite limited to whatever examples that we have here so if you can uh, do practice writing them until it becomes very familiar to you and you can write it without um, sparing a thought just write and then move on the next thing that I want to talk about is to how do we then get the overall equation all right to get the overall equation the all important thing is this that we must have the same number of electrons on both sides of the equation now why is that so is because when writing an ionic equation you should not see any electrons appearing okay ionic equations show the ions undergoing reaction so there shouldn't be any electrons in there so in order to um, ensure that electrons don't appear in the overall equation we must make sure that the number of electrons on the left and on the right are the same in this case we are looking at um, these two half equations the number of electrons on the left would be two electrons the number of electrons on the right would be four electrons so they are not the same so how do we make them the same we have to multiply the first equation by two which will give us the following half equation okay once we have um, addressed the number of electrons on both sides of the equation they will now cancel out and now we can combine combine the reactants and the products together to form the overall equation so I have 4H plus 4OH minus to give me 2H2O plus 2H2 and O2 okay what needs to be done next is to simplify the equation by combining any ions if appropriate so for example in this case 4H plus 4 plus 4OH minus essentially is just 4H2O okay and then after that by simplifying it further by um, cancelling out any um, 
compounds or elements that appear on both sides of the equation. So for example, I have 2H2O over here. So I can remove 2H2O on the reactant side. So the overall equation would be this water being broken up into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. 